Hi friends, Graph Rack from Microsoft is quite advanced and I think it's the best rack architecture so far. Let's say we have a book of 100 pages, we build a rack system. Let's say we divide each page into one chunk, so we have 100 chunks and we create 100 embeddings, we store them in the vector store. Now when we ask a question, we typically extract the top 5 or maybe even 10 chunks which are similar to our query and provide only those few chunks as a context to the LLM. So the LLM response is going to be based only on the retrieved documents which are very small compared to the actual book. Right Now this works fine when we have very specific questions. But let's say we are asking questions like what are the main ideas discussed in the book or what are the key milestones in author's life or provide me a high level summary of the project. The book is about let's say the project. Right? To answer questions like these, the LLM needs to have full information about our documents are the book, right? So in such a cases, the traditional rack with few retrieved documents will not work. And this is where graph rack shines. Okay, so we have traditional rack which is based on the vector store and then the frameworks like Llama Index Neo4j, they have already incorporated this knowledge graphs uh, ideas into rag systems. So in addition to the vector store, we have entities and relationships in the form of knowledge graph. But what Microsoft has done is they took it several steps further. In addition to vector store and traditional knowledge graph, they have introduced few concepts like communities, hierarchical communities, community reports, these claims are covariate. So these four additional concepts, uh, in my view, makes it the best rack system so far. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see the workflow. Here we have, yeah. So we start with a bunch of documents. We chunk them, we create the embeddings. This is what we do for a traditional rack, right? So we take these chunked documents, which we call these text units, and in step two, we extract these entities and relationships, okay? And then we do some further processing of entity resolution if two entities are same. Uh, uh, so we dedupe the entities. So those sorts of things we do, right? So step two is also already known, right? So step one is the traditional rag. Step two is building this knowledge graph. And then... Microsoft introduced these community detection. So using these entities, we develop the communities, okay? And these communities are hierarchical communities. And then for each community, we also create these community summaries, okay? Now, uh, let's say we are talking, uh, uh, our documents are about geography, right? So the communities can be, each country can be one community and within that uh, community, we can have these sub-communities which can be cities, right? So we are doc summarizing or creating reports of these communities, sub-communities, uh, so on and so forth, right? So we are condensing the information at different levels of hierarchy, okay? And we combine all this information uh, so this fifth step, it's uh, mostly uh, the mapping step uh, between uh, the documents, the chunk, uh, the text chunks uh, to the uh, uh, entities and relationship, so on and so forth. Okay. All right. All right. So let's see uh, how we can uh, run it okay so first here uh, I have created a folder called this rack test and then uh, we install the library it's a simple pip install and then create an input folder 
and place you, your documents. So currently it support only text document. So you can place all your text documents. Okay, if you have PDFs, etc., first convert them to text and place uh, your documents, right? So to be begin with, we simply have input folder and the text file, okay? And then first we initialize uh, this index, okay? So run this Python command. What it does is it create this output folder. It create this prompts folder uh, with these four files. And it also create these two files, environmental file as well as the settings file. Now we go into these uh, prompts and the output generated files in another video because uh, that uh, 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 it's quite involved. But as you can see from here, uh, these prompts, uh, not this one, claims extraction. Yeah, so these prompts, those are very, very detailed, right? So they uh, extract lots of information. So go through these prompts. And the only change uh, we need to make is in the environmental file, we need to provide our open AI key. Okay. Uh, don't worry. Uh, here it's called this graph rag API key, but here you can provide your open AI key. Uh, maybe in another video, we will see uh, how to use open source LLMs as well as embedding models uh, to uh, uh, to run the whole system again. All right. Now, the important file is this settings uh, file. Uh, again, you don't have to touch anything. Uh, I have been doing some experimentation, but by default, here you will see an open AI model. Uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, we can make use of uh, open source models. So we need to make some changes uh, within this file, like API basis uh, uh, and the model name uh, for the LLMs. And similarly, uh, for the embeddings also, here we have the model name and the API basis. Okay, so to use open source models, we need to make a couple of changes. Uh, we can make use of Olama, etc. Uh, we'll discuss that uh, maybe in a separate video. All right. Uh, let me go here. Yeah, so we initialize the index that will create the prompts and these two files along with this output folder. Okay, and then we run this command which actually process our input data to create all the required files, right? Uh, the vector store embedding so on and so forth. So this is how it looks like. Yeah, all right, so here we are. Yeah, so here I'm running uh, the command, so creating the index. Uh, so we have one document uh, that is broken into 230 chunks with each chunk have about these uh, 300 characters. Uh, and then Here we are extracting the entities and summarizing the entities, building a graph based on entities. And then these are the final uh, version of entities. Uh, these entities, we convert them into graph slash these nodes. And we detect these communities. And we map the texts to these entities because these entities are based off of, uh, of the texts, right? And then uh, again, doing some mapping between entities and relationships. Uh, and here we create, uh, this is another mapping step where we map the text uh, documents or the chunks uh, into their documents, right? We can have multiple documents, right? So as you can see, it's quite involved and there are a number of steps. And if you see this, all workflow completed successfully. That means uh, it ran uh, fine. Now, even for uh, documents with a moderate size, uh, it is taking about uh, 20 minutes, over 20 minutes with OpenAI and uh, making multiple parallel calls, etc. Right. So the two cons uh, with graph rag are one, it's quite expensive. Now. Indexing or processing the documents itself uh, cost me about uh, $6. And also the process is extremely slow. Okay, so those 
or the current uh, 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 cons of uh, this method right now once this process is complete we will see uh, these timestamp based uh, folders in the output uh, folder and within it you will see uh, these artifacts and reports okay so the reports uh, contains the logs but uh, the more important one is these artifacts as you can see a number of files have been uh, generated so these are generated at the beginning but uh, the final ones are the important so there will be six uh, these create final uh, parquet files okay so here we have um, uh, the communities those are based on uh, these graphs and community reports so the summarization as i mentioned for example a city level summarization then country level summarization then continent level summarization type of thing so that depending on the user question uh, we can uh, extract the appropriate community level information and then this is just a mapping one the final documents we have the entities the relationships the graphs and the text is the chunks in uh, traditional graph sense right so these six documents are used when the user ask a query okay all right so we build the rack system and then we ask questions right so to ask there are two modes so as we discussed for these type of questions we require this global or comprehensive view and we can also ask specific questions uh, for which we don't need uh, uh, we need a, a different set of uh, information to be provided right as context so to ask a question we simply uh, say graph rack query we specify the method uh, let's say it's global and here we are asking what are the top themes uh, discussed uh, uh, are in this story okay so this is how the output look like now i ran all this before i could not do live because uh, it's taking quite a while so i'll show you so here is our query so we are asking uh, so it's a global method uh, what are the top themes uh, in this story okay all right so here you will see success so the global search response uh, so this book uh, is this uh, christmas carlos written by dickens now as you can see uh the top themes are like uh, community building celebration of christmas compassion and generosity moral complexity uh, 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 so and so forth so if this were a traditional rack system out of let's say this 100 page book we would have extracted maybe top 5 pages right uh, or top 5 chunks now those chunks might have talked about let's say these uh, three or four uh, themes we would have missed the remaining uh, themes right so to answer these type of questions we need to provide the llm a high level summarized information because we cannot provide the full book as the context right if we were to do then we wouldn't need this graph rag gra graph racks uh, knowledge graphs etc we wouldn't need anything right we can provide the full books uh, as the context right so that's why using this graph rack we are summarizing the information at different hierarchical levels through these uh, communities right and we are using those communities to answer the global questions uh, like these okay now i build another system uh, using uh, this paul graham uh, uh, stories uh, sorry uh, uh, the essays so here i have asked a question summarize paul's work now this is not uh, based on all his uh, 220 plus uh, uh, essays uh, only based on a couple of essays and here as you can see uh, it divided uh, into uh, so this programming and entrepreneurship essays co-founding y combinator writing projects uh, before the college uh, and then the books okay so it summarizes uh, his work in these four different themes okay now similarly let's see how we can ask a local question so it's exactly the same uh, the method is simply local 
and here we are asking so who is uh, scorch and what is his uh, main relationships right so this is a very pointed specific questions a traditional rag system uh, would also do probably because uh, we are asking who is this person and what are his main relationships right so when we extract those four or five chunks they probably contain all the information to sufficiently ask uh, answer this question so here uh, based on my second system here i am simply asking where did paul study and where is pointed a question so local search uh, is successful and it provided uh, me with this uh, response okay um all right it's quite involved as i mentioned uh, so maybe in the follow up uh, i'll do couple of follow up videos uh, one using uh, how to build the whole system uh, using uh, open source llms as i mentioned it's quite uh, costly a simple book uh, it cost me about some 6 dollars uh, just for building the index okay so uh, we'll test with uh, open source llms and we will also unpack uh what are what is in all these files and how they are related to each other and we'll also visualize uh, uh these graph uh, uh the nodes entities uh, how they related to texts uh, the community sub communities uh, etc all right uh that's all for this video thank you very much